SubsaTube here with another week of Let's Make a Fake One. In the weeks that I went full hermit, I've become a bit of a mess. Worked a few extra days on the first weekend, took Easter weekend off. Sorry for not communicating that sooner. Now let's get to your prompts. Our Shroom City suggested a psychic type with his brain sticking out. This thing was my starting point, the brain. I was a bit stumped on how to proceed until Will Budgets suggested a mushroom fake. There you go, Will. A mushroom cap would make a great place to add the brain part of the design, while the rest of the mushroom could double as a brain stem thing. Color and design wise, Parasect inspired me. The bright colors, the parasitic mushrooms, and the vacant eyes all reflect. When it comes to its naming and typing, I took Skull the Puff's suggestion of making its name a pun and made it dark psychic while resembling another type. I went through quite a few puns, but decided on psychodelic, a play on psycho and psychedelic. Juan suggested an electric poison or poison flying thundercloud stingray. I went with the electric poison. The concept for this fake is pretty much taken care of by the prompt, so it was up to me to decide what it looks like. Eyes and body shape are great places to start. I want to avoid remaking Mantine. Mantine? Mantine. So I took extra effort to really bring out the stingray aspect of it, instead of the manta ray. Once the base of the body and eyes are decided on, all that's left to do is throw in some cloud and thunderbolt attributes, and voila. I call it Stingrain. Shardy Kane suggested a poison electric leopard. To start, I asked myself what's the key to identifying a leopard? Did you guess spots? Spots. Whatever poison or electric type elements I wanted to throw in, I wanted to be sure that it revolves around spots. After a bit of brainstorming, I found the solution in paint. More specifically, spray paint. Spray paint would be a fun way to include spots, plus it's also toxic if inhaled, so win-win. I made this leopard silhouette more angular to mimic graffiti, and experimented with traditional leopard colors and the darker colors of a panther. I don't know about you, but I like the panther one better. Add some hints of electricity to its whiskers, and now you have an agile cat with painted spots. I'll call it tag wire, or maybe painter. Strategy game suggested a fire dragon fire ant. I'm going to outright say that I cheated a bit with this prompt. I tweaked an old bombardier beetle design that I had and made it more ant-like, adding a lava lamp butt for, for fire type reasons. I've always been a fan of dragon types that aren't explicitly based on dragons, like Altaria, Noibat, or Omega Amphoros. Ice type Absol suggested a ghost with mech legs. Right away, that takes care of the typing. Ghost and steel. Now why would it need mech legs? Is it a robot? Is it too cool for regular legs? Did something happen that caused it to lose its original ones? Yes to the last one. I wanted the real legs removed and replaced with steel legs. That settles the steel type. What of the ghost? We rarely see any animal based ghost types, more often getting humanoid, inanimate, or amorphous inspirations. At this point, I wanted an animal that would normally lose its legs, necessitating robotic replacements. Thus, the chicken and the frog were my first considerations. Their legs are eaten, so they would need new ones. I went with the frog. Behold Amphitate, a play on the words amputate and amphibian. Black Rick suggested simply Wendigo. My first exposure to these creatures were from Diablo 2, where they were hulking Bigfoot-like monsters. That's reflected in the posture and proportions of this new design. A quick skim through the Wendigo Wikipedia page, and along comes some more foresty and icy elements to match the mythological counterpart. The colors are a bit difficult to choose, but ultimately I ended up with something more foresty as opposed to ice. Teapot Man suggested a fairy rock armadillo with a crystal shell and the ability to turn into stone when scared. With such an in-depth prompt, I had a pretty good picture of what I wanted from the start. It's one of the rare times that design turns out just the way you want it. I basically made a regular armadillo, stylized it to be more rodent-like and cute, and then added Diancie's jewel all over his body. It's your boy Blex suggests a cute robot cat that's steel and fairy type. 
For some reason, I kept picturing Skitty when I started this design, so please excuse any similarities. The design itself is pretty straightforward, with the exception of the hands and tail, which are made to resemble computer mouses. Mice? Mises. The real challenge was finding the right colors for it. The majority of fairy types are pink. The majority of steel types are gray. I wanted to add something that was neither. A few experimentations later, and we have Neko Robo. Dan suggests an electric flying cockatiel bird with Pika cheeks. Full disclosure, this design doubles as a Sugimori Saturday vid too, since it will be added to my official fake decks. I was already looking for an electric type evolution for my fake Parodiso. I couldn't decide on the right species. Hornbill, canary, albatross, a cockatiel, a bird with Pikachu cheeks by default, solves this dilemma. For the main concept, I wanted to match the overall island adventure theme I had going for the rest of the evolutionary line. Cassavage is a cannibal, Polly Roger is a pirate, Harpshooter is a big game hunter, Kurariri is a poison dart, and Flamamigo is... something. A diver? A sunbather? Still don't know yet. The only additions I could think of for new concepts were tourist and explorer. I went with explorer, more specifically a conquistador based design. Starting with a very detailed face, I kept simplifying until it felt like a real Sugimori design. How'd I do? I tried to incorporate the armor worn by conquistadors into the plumage of its design as best I could to make it feel natural instead of a bird wearing clothes. With how this design turned out, it makes me want to revisit some of my older evolutions. Especially Flamamigo. Finally, distractionism suggests a bug psychic ladybug with hypnotic spots. This one stumped me for a while. I wanted to avoid similarities with Ladybug and Ledian, but ended up with something similar to their beta designs. Whoops. If you match Volbeat, Umbreon, Beta Ladybug, and Polyrath together, you might end up with something like this. Unintentionally, of course. That's it for this week. I'll keep up with your prompts the best I can. 10 per week seems to be my limit. If you haven't already, do the usual YouTube stuff and become a Substitute subscriber. And until next time, I, uh, I release you.